My last project was a mini picnic table condiment holder. It was a small scaled down picnic table with a ketchup and mustard bottle uh, holder. And I got some pretty good responses from that, so I decided to make something a little bit bigger. And this is not that much bigger. This is, I think it's 20 inches wide. Yeah, it's a scaled down version of my sitting benches that are normally 48 inches wide. Uh, but what this is going to allow me to do is create a ketchup, mustard, uh, salt and pepper holder, a little container for some napkins, and this area in the back I can close off and make, uh, you know, something like you have your paper plates in the middle and maybe some uh, spoons and forks on one side and knives on the other. Uh, but basically all your little picnic condiments all in one and it looks like a little sitting bench. So. Uh, anyway, just stick around and I'll show you how I whip this together real quick in SketchUp. Alright, I'm going to start on this bench with the legs. So R for rectangle and I'm going to go up 7.25 inches with a width of 1.5 inches. All of my pieces on this bench are 1.5 inches wide and they all are 0.5 inches thick. So I can use my protractor here to create, whoops, create a miter on both top and bottom that is 15 degrees. Alpha line, connecting the dots here, select this one and delete it. Now using a window and not a crossing, I'm going to select just the angled line here. If you use if if you start selecting stuff from left to right, that is a window. Anything inside this rectangle will be selected. And from right here it's just that little vertical uh, little little angled line these vertical lines will not be selected because they are not 100% inside the window. Now if you go from right to left, that's a crossing. Anything that crosses the area or the perimeter of this rectangle will be selected, which is basically everything minus this little line down here. So using a window, select it. M for move. Control brings up your addition sign. We want to add another piece, not take the original, and add it down there. Space bar. Crossing, delete that, delete that, that's our shape, P for pull, this direction, 0.5 inches, spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. So that's the leg. We need to rotate the leg from here, 15 degrees, so that's what we're going to be seeing. Now like I said, all of my pieces are 1.5 inches thick, so let's start working on these horizontal piece, pieces, I'm sorry, 1.5 inches wide. So the first horizontal piece is 1.5 inches. L for line. We're going to start drawing it this way, and we're going to go this direction of 9.375. And now I need an, an adjacent 15 degree line. So I will use my protractor. Going over to the red, fl red uh, plane, if I move my mouse, see, it, it no longer it stays in the red. So if I go over here, hold shift, it stays. Alright, so off of vertical, I need to go 15 inches, or degrees, and use my L command to finish drawing this particular piece. Select this, delete, delete, P for pull, this direction, 0.5 inches, spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. So that's my piece. Now I need a symmetrical leg on this side going down here, so the easiest way for me to do this is just use the uh, rotate command. There's several different things you can do here, but let's select our leg first, then rotate off of this midpoint because it is symmetrical. Starting over here, we will control for an addition. Rotate this one over to here. Now it is inside this leg, but that's fine because we can use M for move and move it back there. Now there's both of our legs, top horizontal piece. We need to bring in the bottom horizontal piece, so M for move. Select this down the blue axis and press the control button for an addition. So we'll drop it right there. Now they're butted up against each other. We need to drop it another 1.5 inches on the blue axis. That gives a spacing of 1.5. Now to move this over to here, uh, let's just click this M from this point along the green axis and stop in that edge. Now these two pieces are identical pieces because this is obviously a copy. So whatever I do to this is going to be modified up here and I don't want that. So 
I want to right click and say you are unique. You are no longer a copy. So now anything I do to this will not be done up here. Double click to edit the part, P for pull, and as you can see that is the wrong method if I just pull this face. My bad. Instead we need to use a window to select that face. That's more like it. M for move. And we need to move this face along this edge up to this plane. So we just select it and if you see the green axis is highlighted. I can move this all over the place but I want to stay on the green axis and if you are on the green axis as it's highlighted you can press the shift button hold it down and you see it highlights it and that means no matter what you're going to stay on that axis so I can use my mouse to reference off of all kinds of different stuff but I'm still on the green axis so long as shift is held so I want to reference off of this plane and drop it right there. So there's my pieces. Uh, that's the frame of the leg, I should say. I also need a back support over here, and it is mitered on bottom, so it's flush with this, and it's 15 degrees backwards over here. Easiest way for me to do that is to just copy one of these legs. Never draw anything that you can copy. You save so much time that way. And for move, control for copy or addition, and I want to copy this one down to here. Now I want to move this one from this point all the way to the back. So there you go. Now I just need my distance, which is, I think it was 12 and a half inches. So, like I said, we need to right click and make this one unique. Let's make a line from right here on top of this piece. And we're going to go a distance of, what I said, 12.5. That sounds right. So we're way up here. Now we will double click to enter this piece and window to select this face M for move. Let's move it all the way up to the top of this line. Get out of that. Select our line and delete it so it's no longer there. Now this piece is not mitered on this end. It's just a straight cut so double click to get back into the enter. L for line and that is a perpendicular line so P for pull push-pull I should say and remove that little bit so there we go now that's one leg assembly done I need to make another leg assembly so let's go for T for tape measure and this is a distance of what was that I've already done this and wrote down the dimensions so this is 17 inches there we go now select all of this with a crossing M for move, control for addition, or copy, whatever you want to call it. Drop it off on that line. Now it's it's in the right spot, but it's in the wrong orientation. We need to right click and flip every bit of this along the red axis. There you go, the red direction. And we can move it from this point where it needs to be on that line. Select that. And now this inside face is 17 inches away from this inside face. So what we can do is we need to make a slat that goes across a little brace that is flush with this face here. So I'm just going to make a little line going up this piece 1.5 inches, L for line, and I'll just uh, connect the dots here. Sometimes when you're working with angled faces like this, your uh, rectangle command acts a little bit funny. So the thickness of this piece is 0.5 inches and we're going to go all the way over to this face. Let's delete this little line over here, triple click, G for component, enter. So now we've got the legs connected. Now let's work on a slat and R for rectangle from this point all the way over here. My dimensions say that it's 19 inches wide and I need to be one and a half thick, or 19 inches long and I need to be one and a half inches wide. So 19 comma 1.5, enter. P for pull. Thickness of this slat is 0.5 inches, and I want an overhang 0.5 inches from that side, and 0.5 inches from that side. Spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. Now I want to move this all the way to the back. I always start from this vertex and move forward and up when I'm building these. So, M for move, and I will start, come here now, right there. And I will go right here. 
right there. So that's the first slot. I need to add four more to that to come out to the front. And and if you're building an actual bench that you're going to sit on, you typically want some gap in between the, the slats so that water can run off. Uh, this is going to be smaller. I don't want the gap. And I'm also going to put a piece of plywood on the bottom to kind of hold everything together. So I'm just going to butt everything together. M for move. Control brings up your plus sign from this point to there. And my last command, I can just hit X4, enter, and that multiplied my copy times 4 in the same direction. So very handy little feature there. Now I want to add a little plywood panel on bottom, like I said. So R for rectangle. I'm going to go from this point over to here is 17 inches. What looks good? Uh, let's just go 17, comma 6.5. P for pull. Yeah, that looks good. 0.25, quarter inch panel, triple click, G for component, enter. Now I need to copy these this direction. So, easiest way to do that, use a crossing, rotate from this point, and press control, it brings up the plus sign. And I need to go 105 degrees, as you can see in the bottom right corner. Now it is not touching the back, so we need to move everything. And from move from this face in the green direction, hold shift that way we focus in the green direction. But I want to stop on intersected plane, and that looks good up there. So there you go. This is the little mini bench that we just built and uh, now you can start cutting stuff out and adding whatever you need to add. Alright, so I took a little break to grab a bite to eat, but now I'm ready to add the condiment holders. And just for the sake of making things a little easy, I'm just going to hide this plywood panel. Uh, it will be there in the final design, but uh, it makes this sketch up just a little bit easier. Now. I need to add a ketchup bottle, mustard bottle, salt and pepper, some napkins, and some stuff on the back. So I'm going to start on this particular plane, this top plane, considering that uh, that's where the bottles are going to be. And I'll just use this point as reference. And I'm going to draw a half of the figure and then revolve it. And I'll show you what I'm doing real quick. L for line, I will go over 1.125 because my diameter is 2.5, or 2.25 rather. I will come up on the blue axis six inches and just to make this look like a ketchup and mustard bottle and see how it's snapping to my bottom point right there that's what I want so something like that not an exact science here but that's the half of the profile of the ketchup and mustard bottle so I will go for C for circle and just make a little circle down here at the bottom. Delete it, and I will use my follow me command. This is my path. Whoops. This is my path. Follow that path. What do I want to follow? I want this to follow that path. There you go. Triple click. G for component. Enter. So I will move this one back here, and something like that. I will add another one. Something like that. That looks good. Next one is my salt and pepper and they are only one and a half inches in diameter so three quarter inch for radius, P for pull, and let's go 3.5 inches. That is my salt and pepper. G for component, M for move, control, something like that. Yeah. I'll select this one and I'll move it like so on the green axis like so. Now let's make this just a little bit more realistic. So let's select everything minus, so we'll hold the shift button minus this, minus this, this, and this. So we're selecting the bench. 
what in the world's going on? Selecting the bench, and let's just go with that color. Yeah, there's a pine bench. Now I want to select the mustard, make it yellow. I want to make, what in the world? I want to make my ketchup. And salt will stay. Let's try this side. See if my computer likes that. Salt will stay. Pepper will be pepper. That's pretty obvious. Now, how do we cut the holes in SketchUp to line up absolutely perfect with that? So, let's select all of these real quick. And it does clear over here, but I want it a little bit more room. So, let's move it all along the red axis, something like that. That's yeah, fine. Maybe a tip. Now I want to just plunge it right in the surface. And maybe I guess one and a half inches will be fine. Now to get these marked out nice and perfect, there's a neat little feature in SketchUp. But first, these are all copies, so select all of these and make every one of them unique from the next. To verify, I can click on one of these and actually I may have to do it to every one. Yeah, make it unique. Alright, so I need to transfer these marks to cut the hole. What I can do is open up this piece and I can go right click and intersecting faces, intersect faces with the model. This is part of the model, so if I intersect faces, it's going to draw my little lines. Go to the next one, intersect faces with model. Go to the next one, intersect faces with model. Go to the next one, intersect faces with model. Now, if I select my condiments, hide them, I've got some holes. Open up this one, P for pull. Let's get rid of all of that. Let's get rid of all of that. Got a little sliver right here. It's bad aligning on my behalf, but we can go ahead and remove them. Move this down to this point. Move this face down to that point. Go on to the next one. Remove P for pull. We're going to pull all of this material down. And now we have some perfect holes. So edit, unhide, all. They are sitting in perfect holes. And I still need to hide this plywood. And to support them, let's just do this. Let's make a rectangle that is something like that. So we'll go 0.5 by 6. Yeah, it looks good. Pull it down 1.5. minus the thickness of this slat, so it was only one inch, that's right. And let's M for, actually triple click, G for component, M for move, make another one along the red axis, if I can find it, there you go. And let's just go along the red axis, just go six and a half, 6.5, enter. R for rectangle. Now we have a little tray, and this will just be P for pull, a 0.25 inch piece of quarter inch plywood. Triple click, G for enter, component. There we go. Now we have a little tray. Oh, let's see, this is also yellow. Now over here we've got some napkins, and they were, I'll just use this face as a reference, 
they were six point five by six point five. Just get there. We go. M for move. Let's move this up. Yeah, that looks alright, Fnackins. Move it over, and we have a thickness of let's go with four inches of napkins. Triple click. M for move. Move it back a little bit. Make sure I'm not hitting anything else. And we can do the same thing for the napkins, except I have mine going front to back, so I need to do it on this face. 6.5 by 0.5, enter, P for pull, down to this, whoops, spacebar, triple click, G for component, M for move, copy this one into the back, make sure it's not inter interfering with anything and I can make another one on the bottom that plywood panel pull down 0.25 enter spacebar triple click G for component enter uh, that may seem a little confusing uh, I should have said that earlier but you get used to just mashing the commands quickly so go back into my color and that's part of the bench my napkins. The napkins that I am using are bright red. So there we go. We need also need to make these intersecting faces with model. Intersect faces with model. Intersect faces. So now I can hide this. And this is where the plywood panel that I have previously hidden comes in handy because once I cut this off and this off then this little piece right here would be floating so the plywood panel will hold it all in place but for this demonstration it is obviously not involved Remove. back up I don't know what happened there There we go. Alright, so now, edit, unhide, all. There's a little condiment holders. Now, I'm probably going to make this one flip the other direction 90 degrees so you have the same reveal as you would uh, right there. But also in the back, I am just going to take these little guys and make a little half lap, I guess. Let's go with 0.5 for the thickness and 1.5 here. So I can make my two lines and remove that material. I should have done it on the next one. See, it, it updated this one over here because they are copies. Now I can make my little piece. And like I said earlier, if, if you're on some angled faces, your rectangle command wants to act up occasionally. So let's just go ahead and draw this in place. Come on, what is going on? Alpha line. Let's see if I can get this this time. There we go. Something like that. And maybe also... Let's see. I'll use my line command to make another little slat that is half inches thick component and I will move it right 
down this line something like that that way we have a little basket I guess you could put your stuff in the back your paper plates and some uh, you know spoons and forks on one side knives on the other whatever you need uh, up front we've got a block of napkins salt and pepper ketchup and mustard um, you know it's probably gonna look a little bit better than this I just took some rough measurements and I'll probably fine-tune uh, all my condiment sizes and maybe do a little bit better concealing down here but the bench itself is the exact size of what we're going to be working with and like I said I'll be making this in probably two weeks I've got some other stuff to do but I wanted to go ahead and knock out the design uh, if you like what you see like and subscribe and thanks for watching